Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. If you are new to this channel, we build video games. Right now we're working in MakeCode Arcade. It is a free resource. I've already posted a ton of videos teaching you how to build games there. And now we're working our way through extensions, both the recommended extensions and what I call secret extensions, which are extensions you can only use if somebody shares the link with you. So today we are using one of these secret extensions called Damage Indicators. I think this is a really cool one. This is an extension that was shown to me by a student. Um, and once I started using it, I just thought it was really nifty. So what is a damage indicator? If you think back to games, if you play any sort of fighting games, especially if damage isn't always set, if there's some randomness built into the damage, a lot of those games have damage indicators where you'll actually see a number appear kind of falling off of the enemy that you're attacking and it tells you how much damage you dealt them, right? So that's what the damage indicators is. And this is actually a pretty easy extension to use. So before we get started with the extension, right now I have open the clicker game that I made a while back in one of our old videos when we were just getting started. I built this simple clicker game where when I press a button, the character attacks the dinosaur and I get one point for every click that I make. And there's a countdown timer to see how many points I can get. So I'm just going to make some changes to this game using this new extension. So now damage is going to come off of the dinosaur. So I'll be able to see the damage that I'm dealing to the dinosaur. And then I'm going to add some randomness into it. So we'll play around with all of that. So to download this extension, of course, you go to the extension area right here, and then you paste the link in here. This is the link that we're going to be using. I will share it in the description of this video so you guys can easily access it. So once I paste that link and hit enter, I have it right here. I can click on it and it adds it to the toolbox. So here it is, damage indicators. You'll notice it also added text sprite. We've covered the text sprite extension before. The damage indicators uses that text sprite as a background in order to make the numbers appear. So that's why it, it appears here. It would, the damage indicators essentially wouldn't work without the text sprite. So they download together. Okay, so damage indicators. Here we have the section where we're creating the indicator. We select the text and the color. And then we have the block that shows it. So this is an important one here. And then we also have things that allow us to customize and change it. And we'll cover, I think, all these blocks probably. So the first one, my indicator. So as I mentioned, I want to create damage that comes off of the dinosaur. So I'm going to go ahead and create the indicator in the start. And here I can put the number for the damage. Maybe we're dealing 10 damage. And then I can pick a color for it. Um, well, let's see what this looks like right now with white. And then we can take a look at what changes we want to make. Hmm, okay, can't see it yet. I forgot. You can't, actually can't see it until you use this block right here to show it. All right, so let's grab this, and I'm going to put this inside the A button press. So the A button press is when we get a point and when he waves a sword. So that's also when I want the indicator to show. And I have to make sure the names match. The name of the dinosaur is Dino. So where it says my sprite here, we're going to change it to Dino. So when the A button is pressed, I'll get one point. The swordsman will wave a sword and then Dino will show my indicator. So right now my indicator is just the number 10. And then the color I think is, is that white? Probably. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, there it is. So we got the little tens flying off the dinosaur in white, not the easiest to see. So of course we can change that color to something that might be easier. Red might work good. Let's see. Oh yeah, I like red. So there we go. Every time I hit him, a number 10 flies off. And I want you guys to kind of notice how the number 10 works. It flies up and then it falls down. It's using gravity. So it flies up and then it falls down. Now it's moving in different directions. You'll see sometimes it goes to the left, sometimes it goes to the right. So there is some randomness in the movement, but every time it goes up and then comes back down. So it shoots up and down, up and down. Yep, so it's creating one of those small parabolas like we learned about when we were learning how to code gravity because this uses gravity. Okay, so let's look at the code some more. So that is how you create the indicator and then how you use the indicator. So those are the two main blocks. These down here are to customize it. So we can set different things about the indicator here. We can set its font size. So I believe the way font size works with this is it's not counting pixels, it's not pixel size. It's more of like a scale. So if we use font size one, that's the default size. That's the size we just saw a minute ago, right? And if I want it to be bigger than that, I would just make it a bigger number. So if I use two, 
it's actually going to be twice as big. It's setting up similar to creating a scale of two, right? So that's a very big change from one to two. So if two is too big, you could always do a decimal, right? Maybe 1.5, so one and a half size. Yeah, that's not bad. I actually kind of like that. All right, let's keep going. So I'll leave the font size at one and a half, and we'll just add some more stuff to it. The other options here, in the font size, we have gravity, we have initial velocity, and we have random spread. So gravity is deciding how fast it falls, right? Initial velocity is how fast it's shooting up in the air. So if we give it a larger initial velocity, it will shoot higher up in the air before it falls. If we give it a bigger gravity, it will fall faster, or slower gravity will fall less quickly, right? Random spread has to do with how far to the left and the right they move. Now, just an interesting little note I want to make here. It doesn't tell you what the default settings are. It doesn't tell us what the default gravity is, what the default initial velocity is, or the default random spread. So rather than using set, it might make more sense in these situations to use change. That way you're just changing from what its original one was, right? So like gravity, let's see what the gravity is. Since I don't know exactly what the number is, I can look at it and I can decide to either make it stronger or less strong. And if I did, I could change those numbers, right? Um, I actually like gravity. Uh, initial velocity, let's say I want it to shoot a little bit higher up. I actually would like that. So right now, it only shoots up to basically his eyeball. Let's get it a little higher up there. So let's increase. Let's change the initial velocity by how much do I want to change it by? 100? Let's see what that, ha what that does. So I'm increasing the velocity by 100. Oh, okay. So that might be too much. That's shooting too high. Let's increase it instead by 50. Okay, I like that. So now it goes all the way up to the top there. That looks good. But it looks like it's disappearing pretty quick. So maybe I need to increase gravity so it falls faster. So I'm just kind of playing around with these numbers, right? And feel free to play around with them however you decide to in your games. If I change gravity by 200, will that be enough to bring it back down? Yeah, there we go. That's kind of what I was hoping for. I wanted it to come up to kind of near the top of his head and then come down to near the bottom of his feet. And that's pretty close to that. So I actually kind of like that setup. Okay, anything else I want to change? So we did gravity, we did initial velocity, random spread. So the random spread, let's get it back to zero to start with, is how far to the left and the right it moves. So right now, if I do it a bunch, you'll see it's not moving very far to the left or the right. So let's go ahead and increase that. How much? I really don't know. Let's see what happens. If I do 20, is that going to be a big change or a small change? That's actually pretty good. I like that. I just randomly guessed that, but I think that looks good. It's definitely wider than it was before. And once again, it kind of recovers most of his body, which I like. I like to base the damage indicators on the size of the sprite. So if it's a small creature, you don't need really widespread damage. But for a large creature like this, you might want that, right? Okay. Were there any other drop downs? No, that's all. So I'm happy with the selections that I made here. I chose a font size, and then I changed the velocity, gravity, and random spread. All right, so we'll keep going here. Of course, these bubbles allow you to see what's currently being used. All right, cool, cool, cool. And then, so this is the text, this is the color, and this is the stats for what we just did. So if you were curious what the stats were, this one can actually help you out with that. So let's say we were just curious about what the gravity actually is, right? I could throw in here as a programmer, as a tester, I wouldn't use it in the game, but just as a tester, I could put this in here and do a button I'm not currently using like B. And now if I press B, it'll tell me how strong the gravity is, All right? So 700 is the speed of gravity right now. So just a fun little thing you can use if you were curious about the stats. I do that sometimes, want more information about my game. All right, let's go back to the blocks. So these blocks allow you to see uh, the font size and the color. And then, I, did I skip something? Oh, I skipped this, the end icon. How could I skip the icon? This is a great one. All right, let's go to the icon. So the icon puts a picture with the number. So in, the, in this case, I'm doing damage. So sometimes when you do things that are health related, 
Um, I like to grab a heart. Now, since I'm doing damage, I, sh I should also probably do a broken heart. So let me just go ahead and break this heart right quick to represent the damage. There we go. So I created this icon to go with the indicator. So check out what happens now. Now it's showing a broken heart with the number 10. Isn't that cool? Just a cool little visual there. Now, of course, my broken heart's not the prettiest. I'm sure you guys could draw something better than I did. But yeah, so you can add icons to your indicators. All right, what else do we have here? So we have set, change, we have the icon, we have the bubbles that show us the information, and then these allow us to set the color or set the text. So this is gonna be important because right here when we created the indicator, we gave it a text of 10. But remember what I said at the beginning of this video, a lot of times damage indicators are used when the damage varies, when it's not always the same amount, when there's a little bit of randomness to it, which means that the text is actually going to change. So let's build that into this game. Right now, I get one point every time I hit the monster. I want to base the score on the damage, and I want that damage to be random. So let's build some randomness into this. Um, let's go ahead and let's grab. There's more than one way to do this, but I think this will work. I'm going to grab when the button's pressed. I'm going to set the text to, and I'm going to go to the math section and grab a pick random here. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Aha. All right, then I guess I won't do it that way. Let's do it a different way. Let's grab a variable. We're going to create a new variable to keep track of the damage amount. So I'm just going to call it damage. And I'm going to pick a random value. So how much damage should we deal to this monster? Let's say instead of doing 10, let's say any number between 1 and 10. And then we're going to change the score by that same number called damage. And when it does that, I want to set the text to that same amount. So I'm every time I press the button, it's randomly. What's the error message I'm getting here? Argument type number is not assignable to type string. Okay, but it's using a number right now. Why wouldn't it let me use a number here? Hmm. You know what? Let's just use a join block. Because join blocks let you put numbers in them. Yeah, I don't know why I did that, but that fixes it. Because join blocks allow you to put text and numbers or variables as text. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm setting the variable up as a random number between 1 and 10. I'm changing the score by that same amount. And then I'm setting the indicator to that same value before I show it. So this means that every time I hit him, it should pick a random number between 1 and 10, and then I should get that many points. You know what? 1 and 10 is pretty, pretty extreme. Maybe I should do 1 and 5. I can do whatever numbers I want to. It's really completely up to me as the programmer here. So let's see what happens. 2, 1, 3, 4. Yeah. So as I'm doing it, numbers are coming off, and I'm getting points for the amount of health I'm taking away from the character. This could also be done in something like a projectile game where maybe there's a boss fight and you're shooting at the boss. Maybe instead of having a set amount of damage each time, you create a little randomness and you can make it visible to the player so they know how much damage they're taking by using something like this damage indicator. Okay, so I think we've covered everything I wanted to cover there. Yep, and of course you can change the color if you want to, but in this case, I'm happy with it the way it is. But you know what? Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Just to show you because I like to show you guys things Let's say at the same time it's doing random numbers, it's also doing random colors. Do you guys remember how to do random colors? Have I ever shown you that? So all the colors built into the game, if you look here, it's these 15 colors, right? The white is number one, the black is number 15, and everything in between. So you can actually do random colors by setting it to numbers one through 15. Just a fun little thing. I don't think I ever showed you guys that but numbers can be associated with colors. So now if I do it, they're also different colors each time. <laughs> kind of fun, right?
I can get rid of that heart if I want to. I actually don't love that. I think it would look better without the heart. There we go. So now it's doing random damage between 1 and 5, and it's a different color each time. That actually doesn't look that bad. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Okay, so I think I'm done with this video. If you learned something new today, make sure you hit that like button to show your support for this channel. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. If you build something using damage indicators, maybe you go back to your clicking game, maybe you go back to one of your other games. If you build something using this extension, I want to see it. So click on that share button, that icon right there with the three dots. Copy your link, put it in the comments so I can check out your games. I still have a few more videos to make on MakeCode Arcade extensions, so I hope to see you there. Have a great rest of your day.